Hi, this is Brian Gracely. And in this second video looking at cloud computing and how it's going to change um, our organizations and the people and the IT skills related to delivering these cloud computing services or consuming these uh, cloud computing services. The first one we looked at was around people, really the shift that technology is making in terms of changing the IT stacks, uh, in terms of what that means in terms of IT people skills and how those are going to have to morph and change a little bit to deal with the blurring of the technology lines. But let's look next at sort of process. What's involved process-wise in order to, be, in order to uh, consume IT services uh, as a cloud-like model or to deliver IT services in a cloud-like model. So we'll look at both the sort of uh, supply and demand of, of what goes on in terms of process for this. So, you know, it's always good to look at where things have been in the past. So let's look at uh, a traditional IT organization, how they delivered things. Well, they would go out and they would build all their infrastructure. They would typically build some common infrastructure that could be used for anything. And this was where the network would come in and certain IT services would come into play. Then they would also start to build specific infrastructure for individual applications, right? So infrastructure X for application X, infrastructure Y for application Y, and so on and so forth. And so we would have sort of common infrastructure that would get paid for by the entire company, and then we may have individual infrastructure and individual applications that would get paid for by lines of business um, as needed. So this was fine, except it tended to create lots of silos. It tended to create um, inefficiency use, uh, inefficient use of resources, whether those were actual hardware and software resources or those were space and power and cooling and so forth. Um, but it did align very well to the lines of business and their individual budgets and being able to drive that to individual cost. Now, where things change in terms of processes, um, what would happen was somebody would come along and say, I need a new application. I need new application Z, right? Well, in order to do that, I've got to go and say, well, uh, I got to go find the cost to drive the acquiring the application, developing the application. I'm probably also going to have to find the, uh, the cost to find the infrastructure for that. And then I'm going to have to figure out how to tie that in my infrastructure. And in some cases, this worked out really well. In other cases, now we maybe had problems because uh, this was bought in year one, this was bought in year two, and this was bought in year three. And you know the requirements on this may not have been capable for the infrastructure. It may not be fast enough. It may not have enough space. It may not have some new set of features. So we sort of had inconsistency sometimes what would happen. Uh, and so again, we'd get into further silos. So what, what do we need to have happen? Or the other challenge that we would have happen is, you know, the way the costing for all these would happen, whether it was for servers or storage or software licensing or network, you could have different depreciation cycles. And so you had to get all these things lined up in terms of cost, in terms of business need, in terms of how long it would take to provision things. And these processes here could take six weeks, six months, they could take six days if things were there, or they could take over a year. It was all over the place in terms of how things were requested, budgeted, approved, acquired, installed, met up with certain standards, secured, compliant, all those different elements. And what we see from cloud computing in the public domain, and again, we always go back to sort of best practices or the things that are easily visible, is we would see in the public domain, they would build infrastructure, and that infrastructure would be created in such a way that, for the most part, every application that would come along would run on top of this. Now, what did this mean? Well, in some cases it meant it was ideally suited for application X, Y, Z, A, and B. And in other cases, application C, which was very, very unique, very highly customized, needed certain very, very specific characteristics, well, maybe that wasn't a great fit. Maybe that didn't fit exactly on here, but that was okay, right? It was tremendous amount of efficiency could be gained by having common infrastructure, common process, common ways to deploy, common ways to monitor, right? So we're going to acquire things, acquire resources the same way. We're going to monitor resources the same way. We're going to, you know, sort of cost resources the same way in this model where I've got commonality. We've taken out that sort of layer of customization. We've got commonality in here in the infrastructure. And 
these different applications can live on top of it based on how much infrastructure they buy, based on how much, um, you know, what they need. And it allowed us to sort of carve out, it allows them to carve out and say, that's not what we specialize in. That's not what we do. And so this becomes the exception as opposed to the rule. It becomes sort of like these one-off infrastructures. And so what needs to happen in terms of process is we have to start looking at how much commonality can we build? Can we start to remove some of this, which is typically inefficient, typically difficult to manage individually one-off, although today it's aligned very well to our budgeting process, and we'll talk about that up in organization. But can we remove some of the inconsistencies of our infrastructure, get to more consistent infrastructure, right? more consistent operational aspects, and then be able to look at that becomes the 80% in the old 80-20 model, right? This becomes the 80%. This is consistent for our, most of our applications, which in most cases these probably align to as well. This probably used to be our 80%, right? So we begin to align those. And the rest, these outliers, become our 20%, right? This is our 20%. And we start to think about, okay, how can we become really efficient with the 80% that used to be here that now aligns with these new models in terms of process? Right? And we may still have to one off the 20%. We may look at, you know, these get certain internal demands for compliance, for security, for whatever, and these can become things that we move into the private cloud. They become candidates for public cloud usage. But we start to think about this overall process of how we procure, in terms of how we provision, in terms of which applications need their own sort of special space versus the things that really, really do versus just sort of ego-driven or non-technically driven reasons to have this. What that's going to do, it's going to drive these types of costs, these inefficiencies out. It's going to allow us to be much more consistent in terms of how we manage things and our operations, which is really where our costs are. It's going to allow us to, as new things come along, so this becomes, you know, moves from that to this, and this becomes, you know, new applications that have to get added or changed. We can be much more consistent in that. And again, what that's going to do, it's going to drive cost out of the system. It's going to drive speed into the system. It's going to make things faster. It's ultimately going to make the business users happier. But it's about thinking about how do we process-wise take some of the inconsistencies out? How do we think about, uh, we'll talk about sort of where that affects things like budgets and organizations a little bit later, but the ability to say I'm going to have some sharedness within what I'm doing uh, is a driving factor to reduce cost, hopefully make us move more quickly, but also give us some flexibility in terms of being able to add new things or replace things that are no longer really valuable to the company. So that's really sort of step two as we look at how things are changing from un in, under the covers for cloud computing in terms of IT skills and organization. So first we talked about the people skills being driven by technology changes. Now we're really talking about sort of process, what the architecture sort of changes, some of the process with things that we want to think about a little bit differently. And then finally, we're going to talk in the next iteration about what this means organizationally uh, to the business and to IT in terms of how we're going to allow people to be empowered, what the budgets, the way the budgeting process may have to change, and ultimately how the IT organization, the CIO, may want to think about a portfolio of resources that he has. So thanks for watching this video and uh, look forward to having you watch the next segment as well. Thank you and have a good day.